For many fans and critics, it's hard to argue that next to Nirvana, Pearl Jam is the most popular band coming from the Seattle grunge scene and is overall one of the most influential rock bands today. Formed from the ashes of the short-lived band Mother Love Bone, Pearl Jam immediately made an impact with their debut album, 10. Since then, the band's remained active despite changing members and musical trends, and has remained prolific by releasing new music. The band's been praised for their idealism and maintaining their integrity, although this has led to a few questionable decisions, such as the limiting the production of music videos and, most notably, a legal battle against Ticketmaster. So how has Pearl Jam remained relevant after all these years? Keep watching as we explore the story of one of grunge's most acclaimed bands, from their beginnings in the grunge scene to becoming one of rock and roll's greatest acts. Early Days of Pearl Jam Pearl Jam is a band that needs no introduction. As one of the key players in the grunge scene of the early 90s, Pearl Jam was one of the decade's best-selling acts and influenced countless bands later on during the post-grunge era of the late 90s and early 2000s. The band was formed in Seattle in 1990 after the demise of the grunge band Mother Love Bone. Guitarist Stone Gossard and bassist Jeff Amon played in the band, which was fronted by vocalist Andrew Wood. Mother Love Bone had completed work on their debut album Apple just days before its release. Wood died from a heroin overdose. The album's release was delayed as a result and was eventually released four months later. Although it ended up being an influential grunge record, Wood's death effectively ended the band and their dreams of becoming big in the music scene. After Mother Love Bone's demise, Gossard started working on new music with another Seattle-based guitarist, Mike McCready, who encouraged Gossard to reconnect with his former bandmate, Ament. The trio were able to produce a demo that they used to find more members for their new project. The demo eventually reached to the hands of a San Diego gas station attendant and singer named Eddie Vedder. After listening to the tape, Vedder wrote and recorded vocals for three songs in the demo and sent the tape back to Seattle. Impressed with Vedder's work, they flew him to Seattle to join the band. Shortly after, the group hired drummer Dave Cruzen to complete the lineup. The band was initially named Mookie Blaylock after the basketball player of the same name, but they eventually changed their name to Pearl Jam. The band's early influences included classic rock bands like Led Zeppelin, The Who, and Pink Floyd, as well as punk and alternative bands like The Ramones and Sonic Youth. Their sound was a fusion of these influences, creating a unique blend of heavy guitar riffs emotive vocals and introspective lyrics, which set them apart from other grunge bands at the time. First Albums Pearl Jam's debut album, 10, was recorded March to May of 1991. After the album's completion, drummer Dave Cruzen left the band to get treated for alcoholism. Matt Chamberlain replaced him for a couple of shows before Dave Abruzzese eventually came on board to become the band's drummer. 10 was released in August 1991, a month before Nirvana released their landmark album, Nevermind, which led to the explosion of grunge. The album wasn't an instant success, but a year later, when grunge was gaining steam, it started to chart. By late 1992, it had climbed to the second spot on the Billboard 200. The album sold millions of copies and spawned some of Pearl Jam's most popular songs like Alive, Even Flow, and Jeremy. The music video for the latter was often played on MTV and won four awards at the 1993 MTV Video Music Awards, including Video of the Year. Pearl Jam's popularity skyrocketed and they quickly became one of the world's biggest bands. Expectations for a follow-up were high, and the band delivered with their sophomore album, 1993's Versus. It set the record for most copies sold in its first week, selling almost a million copies within its first five days. This was despite the band's refusal to produce a single music video to promote the album an uncommon practice in the music industry that the band would continue in the coming years. They also limited interviews and put a cap on ticket prices to their concerts. However, this would lead to a legal battle that became one of Pearl Jam's defining moments. Legal Battle with Ticketmaster In 1994, Pearl Jam sued ticket vendor Ticketmaster for what the band believed was the company's monopolization of the concert ticket market. The band, which tried to keep their concert tickets at a modest price, claimed that Ticketmaster was squeezing way too much from concert goers by adding high service fees on top of their ticket prices. During the legal battle, Pearl Jam were forced to create their own venues every time they were in town to perform, as Ticketmaster had contracts with most event venues in the United States. The case even made its way to Congress and the U.S. Department of Justice, who were investigating Ticketmaster's questionable business practices. Eventually, the Department of Justice dropped the case, but Pearl Jam continued its boycott of Ticketmaster by refusing to play in venues that partnered with the ticket vendor. Reports have stated that the band's 
legal battle with Ticketmaster and their refusal to work with them cost them around $2 million. The band's boycott of Ticketmaster also caused logistic problems for the band as they had to find other venues, such as sports fields, where they could hold their performances. Continued success. Despite these challenges, Pearl Jam persevered, and their music continued to resonate with their fans. In the middle of their war against Ticketmaster, Pearl Jam recorded their third album, Vitology, released in late 1994. However, tensions were high within the band during this time, and drummer Dave Abruzzese was fired before the record was completed. He was replaced by Jack Irons, the founder and original drummer for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. The album was a success, becoming the second fastest selling album during its first week, just behind its predecessor, Versus. Pearl Jam continued being productive for the remainder of the decade, releasing the albums No Code and Yield in 1996 and 1998 respectively. The music video for Do the Evolution from Yield was created by Todd McFarlane, best known as the creator of the comic book series Spawn. It was the band's first music video since 1992 when they released their video for the song Oceans from their debut album 10. The band again changed drummers when Jack Irons left in 1998 and was replaced by Matt Cameron, the drummer for fellow grunge act Soundgarden who had just disbanded the year prior. Also in 1998, Pearl Jam and Ticketmaster reached a compromise which allowed the band to return to full-scale touring and play major event venues in the U.S. Pearl Jam during the 2000s As the 90s came to a close, Pearl Jam began experimenting with their sound, incorporating elements of folk and acoustic music into their songs. They continued to evolve and change their sound in the 2000s, with albums like Binaural, Riot Act, and the self-titled Pearl Jam, and the critically acclaimed claimed Backspacer showcasing a more mature and introspective sound. During the early 2000s, the band also recorded virtually all their concerts on tour and released them as live albums. However, an incident in 2000 almost led the band to retire. During Pearl Jam's set at the Roskilde Festival in Denmark, nine people were crushed and 26 others were injured as a result of a human domino effect caused by people trying to get closer to the stage. The band stopped playing to try to calm the crowd, but it was too late by then. The tragic event caused band members to consider retiring. However, they decided to press forward and continue touring and recording. The band collaborated with filmmaker Cameron Crowe, best known for his films Singles, Jerry Maguire, and Vanilla Sky, for a documentary project. In 2011, the band released their documentary film, Pearl Jam 20, which took an introspective look on the history of the band since they began 20 years prior. In 2017, Pearl Jam was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, solidifying their importance to the grunge scene and impact on rock music. Despite achieving this milestone, the band's most recent albums, 2013's Lightning Bolt and 2020's Giga prove that at their age, the grunge legends still have a lot left in the tank, and fans can expect more from the rock legends in the coming years.